Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Character Driven. My name is Paul, I'll be your GM for a little while. And this is video number six, I believe, in my journey towards 50 videos celebrating my 50th birthday and my love of tabletop role-playing games. And today, uh, I begin a journey through the book of the Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica, where I'm going to be pouring into uh, character development and really pouring throughout the book on thoughts and ideas and uh, today's video is all about uh, what I think about the book in general so let's get started there. Uh, Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica is the world created by Magic the Gathering brought to life as a world for a use with D&D 5e and I think it's a fantastic world. Uh, I have read through the book and I just think there's just a ton of things you can do in there. I think it's a it's a great um, world to play in. Uh, there's lots of uh, political intrigue. There's lots of opportunities for, you know, just all kinds of things. It's just a, it's a, it's a pretty good world on par with uh, a lot of the other worlds that uh, 5e and d and is created in general. So, uh, also I think like the book because it goes through all 10 guilds. There's 10 different guilds and I hope I'm going to make a video on every single one of them. Uh, today, uh, I'll be sharing one of those in just a second. Uh, I also like the book because it fleshes out uh, the 10th district into its six precincts where it, it gives you a world to play in. It gives you kind of like a your, your own water deep, right? It gives you that kind of uh, area there, which makes it kind of cool. Um, and there's a whole chapter on that that gives you uh, lots of good stuff, which also uh, gives you a whole chapter of adventure threads, you know, and hooks that you can use within the uh, the city there. Uh, and there is no lacking of that as well. And and because um, the the world itself is very updated, by the way, it's uh, it's very much uh, you know there's inside plumbing. There's uh, it kind of reminds me of the world Xandar from Guardians of the Galaxy. Maybe a little less sci-fi, but I just kind of imagine that world with the different kinds of, you know, people in it and, and, and just, just kind of the overall look. That's what it kind of reminds me of. Um, in addition, uh, what I also like about the book is I like about the uh, the new magic items and monsters that are in it, and we're going to jump into all that uh, when the time comes. So let's jump into today's guild that I want to talk to you about today, and uh, that guild, by the way, this, this whole book is filled with great tables, and so my first uh, one that I rolled up was the cult of Rakdos. And so let me give you four facts about Rakdos. Uh, and, and I'm like I said, it's completely random. I chose this uh, just off the table. I rolled it up. Uh, and the facts you need to know about it is, number one, it's named after the demon who started it, uh, the demon of Rakdos, which uh, this particular guild is uh, is fraught with danger uh, is, since it's run by a demon. But it also makes for great foils and, and other kind of good things like that. Uh, I, they're, they basically, they like chaos pain and pleasure. Uh, this is a freaky group of people. This is just, uh, this is like Circus de Soleil uh, on, you know, some sort of another level, um, which means they're made up of performing troops, right? They just go around the city and do these kind of crazy, uh, you know, picture like Orlando, uh, you know, with just these uh, massive shows of uh, things that are going on and, and displays of uh, uh, just <laughs> egregiousness of chaos. Last thing you need to know uh, about the cult of Arakdos is their greatest threats are the Azorius and Boros guilds, which are all about order and lawfulness and uh, keeping things contained. Uh, and that makes for just fun play there, especially in a party if you have somebody from Azorius and somebody from Rakdos. And speaking of characters in a party, I have rolled up a character uh, that uh, is going to be very unique uh, to Ravnica. In fact, I'm breaking the rules already because as far as I know, there are no tieflings uh, in, in, in Ravnica, but there are now. Uh, and her name is Oriana. And uh, I made her up. And if you could picture, she's very much um, maybe a, a wilder kind of Harley Quinn. Um, that's kind of the vibe I get from her. So she's she's kind of like that. Uh, but as you can see there, she's in the Cult of Rakdos. Um, she's going to be a bard. Uh, I don't play too many bards, but this sounds like a pretty wild uh, deal here for to be a bard in this group. So I said bard, bard's going to work for me. She's chaotic neutral. And the reason I made her cha chaotic neutral instead of chaotic evil is because she has um, 
other issues at play here. Uh, you know, that I didn't want to make her completely evil. Number one, I don't, I'm not a big fan of playing an evil character, but I like her that she's chaotic, but she could go good if she wanted to. She there, she has her own other issues at play, and she has her own goals. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit about her background story and, and things like that in a second. Um, uh, she's going to be a fire juggler. I'm excited about that. I mean, who doesn't like fire juggling? Um, so she's going to be juggling fire because, well, she, she, she's got fire. Uh, she is on fire, literally, most of the time. So fire juggling works uh, in her her deal there. Uh, some of the other things she does, she loves to uh, play instruments. So I've given her three instruments. I have given her the uh, flute which is kind of like a pan flute. Uh, I've also given her a violin, which I immediately thought when I'm thinking of this, I started to think of uh, Charlie Daniels' band and The Devil Went Down to Georgia. And I just thought that's what I wanted to be. I wanted to be that fiddle player, the the the, uh, the devil fiddle player when she's playing things and she's just going crazy on the stuff, uh, you know? Um, and so also I gave her a kazoo uh, to play maybe when she's fighting. Uh, I just think a kazoo is a, is a crazy, awkward, weird thing. Um, and I just thought, man, that'd be just fun and chaotic and a bit whimsical uh, for battles or things like that. Um, uh, you know, and I want the pan flute, by the way, the pan flute's going to have like little flames coming out of it. Uh, I like that, but I also want the, the flute. I want to get that thing done in certain ways where, um, where it can evolve, right? I want it to play. I want her to be able to play certain things and certain things happen. Like it could make the crowd more riotous. It could be, make you become violent. It can make you, you know, all the very, it can make you sleepy, you know, the music, or it can make you sad and make you weep uncontrollably or, uh, you know, or laugh hysterically, you know, something like that. I want to have, you know, something like that that can, that can have some of those things. So, which would be, uh, be fun to do. Some other facts that you need to know about Oriana, uh, her personality, uh, everything is funny, including your pain and suffering. So she uh, she's an equally opportunity employer that if whether you're hurt or whether you're, uh, you know, suffering uh, pain or pleasure, she she finds some sort of uh, humor in that and will make note of it. Uh, as far as her ideas go, uh, she's no one you know tells her what to do. It, it just doesn't it just doesn't work, uh, which means that not only does uh, Rakdos not like, you know, other people in power, I, I, she herself is not even in favor of her own leadership. She has issues within her own uh, deal about what her ideas of leadership are and, and, and things like that, which makes her a truly unique individual. Um, her bond uh, is with her troop. And even though uh, she doesn't uh, always maybe go out with them, or if you decide to do that, you could make a whole troop. Basically, you're a troop of bards or warlocks or uh, things like that that they recommend in the book. Uh, you can put a troop together where you go out performing and you're just roaming around and doing carnivals and things like that. And, and uh, you know, you guys can go out and reap chaos or uh, something happens that kind of changes your mind. It says, huh, you know, as much as we like chaos and everything, we're, we're going to upset the apple cart here and, and maybe get somebody out of power who needs to be out of power. And the last thing you need to know about Oriana is that she resents the rich and powerful. I've not yet developed why she resents the rich and powerful yet. Um, she just feels that way. She, I, I don't know if I randomly rolled that or I just kind of put that on her because I, I, it just gives her something to kind of rub up against. First of all, she's in the, in the cult there, so she doesn't like, she likes other things being in flux where positions of power move around and things like that. So she resents that, but I don't know why she personally resents it yet. So I'm still working on that. You're welcome to leave me some comments down below as to uh, why Oriana might resent uh, you know, power uh, and things like that and, and why she's committed to kind of tearing it down uh, when she sees it, when it's not doing as it should. Well, that's it for today, guys. I hope that you guys enjoyed my little preview of the Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica. Uh, I don't know if you bought it yet. I would love to know. Please hit me down in the comments. Maybe you were on the fence about it, and maybe this uh, review is helping you out a little bit. And if it is, I'll just let you know I am an Amazon affiliate, and I've put a link down below that you can purchase the book, and that's a way for you to support um, the, the, the videos that I am producing for you. So, uh, But if you have any other comments, uh, I am going to be doing some videos on all the guilds uh, and the monsters and the treasures. So there's going to be a long journey here. Uh, but as always, Always, uh, I believe in character-driven stories, and so I will bring you a character from each of the guilds that I am creating. So, But that's it for today, guys. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me for a little while, and uh, be sure to hit the thumbs up button if you like the video, and uh, share it with somebody else. Thanks, guys. Have a good day.